So your teacher is wrong about soccer toa. Now, I'm sure they're a very nice person. I'm not trying to start a fight here, but they're almost certainly teaching you soccer toa the wrong way. And the reason I know this is because everyone's teaching it the wrong way. The world's teaching it the wrong way. I was taught the wrong way, and I've been teaching it the wrong way. So, what's the problem with soccer toa? Well, before I talk about what the problem is, let's look at what a teacher would normally tell you here, which is all true. This is our unknown angle theta. And we can label up our triangle in the following way. The right angle opposite that, we have something called our hypotenuse. And then the other two sides we can label as one that's opposite our angle here. And one that is touching our angle, but not the hypotenuse. And we call that one our adjacent one. And then hopefully your teacher taught you that the trigonometric ratios are exactly that. Trigonometric ratios. They are ratios between two sides. So sine theta is equal to the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse, O, H. Cos theta is the ratio between adjacent and hypotenuse. And finally, tan theta is equal to the ratio between opposite and adjacent. These are your trigonometric ratios. And they are correct, they are true, they are right, but they are also useless. What do I mean? Well, let me show you. Here's a triangle, and we can use a trigonometric ratio to find x. Now, uh, this is opposite and this is hypotenuse, so it's going to be the sine one. And I know the opposite side, and I know the angle, but I don't know h. So I can put in the known bits and then find the unknown bit. And now that I've done that, the thing I really need to do next is rearrange. Now, in this case, I need to multiply both sides by x, divide both sides by sine 45, and that's going to let me find my x value. So that's approximately 11.31, and it works. So why am I saying this stuff's useless? Well, what if the triangle looked a little bit different? What if this time I knew the hypotenuse, but I didn't know the opposite? Well, I just put in the things that I now know instead of what I used to know, and once I've done that, I need to rearrange, this time by multiplying both sides by 12. So I've done it, x is about 8.49, and it works. So why am I saying this is useless? Well, consider if your triangle looked just a little more different. Imagine if we didn't know the angle. We can still use the same formula, because it's opposite and hypotenuse, but this time we don't know the angle, and we know that the opposite is 8, and that's 12. And then we need to rearrange by taking inverse sine. And now we have an angle of 41.81. And again, I found an answer, it works, so why on earth am I saying this is useless? And the reason is this. Every single time I used this equation, I've had to rearrange it. I had to rearrange it when I didn't know the opposite. I had to rearrange it when I didn't know the hypotenuse. I had to rearrange it when I didn't know the angle. What good is a formula if you have to keep rearranging it? Now, I really want to sell you on this. So let me give you a very concrete example, and you can show this one to your teacher. Let's use a formula that we're a little more familiar with than this kind of thing. A rectangle. If you want to try to find the area of this rectangle, what formula pops into your head? Now, if you say area equals length times width, then you're like pretty much everyone else on planet Earth. But why not a different formula? You could say that area is equal to length times width, but you could also say that width is equal to area over length. Now imagine if you were in a parallel universe where your teacher said to you, today we're going to learn the area formula of a rectangle, and it is, Area divided by length equals width. That's weird. Why would I create a formula designed to find width? It doesn't make any sense if it's the area formula. But I can still use that the same way that I would use the area formula. If I don't know the area, I can sub in length, I can sub in width, and I can rearrange it to find the area. But you could also live in a second parallel universe in which all students are taught that area divided by width is equal to length. And again, why on earth would you do that? But also, 
Well, it's equally as valid, right? It's just a relationship between these three variables. But most of the time, when we're dealing with area problems, we're trying to find the area. So we should probably create a formula that leads us directly to the area. And that's why it's a good idea that in this universe we do this. And if I was in one of these parallel universes, I'd be probably making a video about how this formula is stupid and we should use this formula, or how this formula is stupid and we should use that formula. All right, so now that we've established that formulas are useful, are better in some ways and worse in other ways, I am telling you this is bad and we can do better. This is that better. Trigonometric scalars. Every textbook in the world shouldn't be called trigonometric ratios. It should be called trigonometric scalars. And you should learn trigonometric scalars. Now, what's a trigonometric scalar? Well, let me show you. I'm going to take the H and I'm going to multiply both sides by H. And that's going to give me a formula that looks like this. Opposite equals hypotenuse times sine theta. Now, sine theta is our trigonometric scalar. And it is the thing that you multiply the hypotenuse by to get the length of the opposite. This thing times that length will equal that length. It helps you to scale one of the lengths down to another length or up to another length. But in this case, always down because the hypotenuse is the longest side. So we have two other trigonometric scalars as well. Adjacent equals hypotenuse cos theta. Now cos theta is the trigonometric scalar that you multiply the hypotenuse to get the adjacent. And finally, opposite equals adjacent times tan theta. And tan theta is the trigonometric scalar that you multiply the adjacent by to get the opposite. Trigonometric scalars are way better than trigonometric ratios. And you might be saying to yourself, well, hang on, you're still going to have to rearrange these, aren't you? Yes, you are. Two out of three times, you're going to have to rearrange these. If you're trying to find the opposite, you don't have to rearrange it. Put some numbers in here and you know what the opposite is. If you want to find the H and you know those two things, then yes, you are going to have to rearrange it. If you want to know theta, then yes, you are going to rearrange it. But rearranging two out of three times is way, way better than rearranging three out of three times. But there is a way more important reason that trigonometric scalars are infinitely better than trigonometric ratios. Vectors. Now, you may know what a vector is, you may not, but let me give you a quick rundown. A vector is an arrow. That's it, just an arrow pointing in a certain direction. Now, we describe a vector using how far across it goes and how far up it goes. So in layman's terms, a vector is equal to how far across it goes, i, don't worry about that too much, plus how far up it goes, j. Now, if I knew this angle right here, and if I knew this length right here, I can now employ my trigonometric scalars to figure these out without any rearrangement. Now, how far across it goes and how far up it goes, you can see I've got a right angle triangle here. Now, this is the adjacent side here, and this is the opposite side here. So adjacent is going to be h cos theta using my trigonometric scalar. 5 cos 30 plus how far up using my trigonometric scalar, this one here, I can say that that's 5 sine 30 j. And that way, using those trigonometric scalars in my mind, I can jump straight here. Now, it's not an understatement to say that vectors get used everywhere in higher level maths. Now, if you're working with this model in your brain, as I am, every time you try to do something like this, you've got to do a little bit of a rearrangement and put it in there. However, if from a young age, you don't think about trigonometric ratios, but instead think about trigonometric scalars. This becomes far more intuitive. Your life becomes so much better simply because you learnt this formula instead of this formula. Instead of learning Sokotoa, learn Osak Oat. 
so much more useful. Now this might be a hard thing to do because your teacher will keep talking about these, but you need to keep thinking about these. You'll know you're successful if you think of this formula instead of this formula. If you do that, you're setting yourself up for a beautiful future when it comes to trigonometry.